kind of got tired of the, of, the, of the old intro a little bit, but what's up? We're gonna mix it up. Just a, up just today? a little tiny bit, just a little tiny bit. But saludos a mis compadres, a mis comadres, a mis amigos, mis cuates, mis primos, mis primas, mi familia, and for all my people that don't speak Spanish. What up, though? Hey, what up? <laughs> what up? What up? It's us like podcast, baby. We back. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, this is why social media is. Not what you think. We don't record every week. We take breaks, which is probably one of the best things that we can possibly. Dude, we needed that that break. It was what, yeah. like maybe three weeks. Yeah, so, something like that. Something like that. I mean, I see you guys every almost every week, but see that doesn't count. <laughs> At least in front of the cameras. Yeah. Yeah, we actually had someone remind us uh, last Sunday when we went out uh, to go get a drink, and she was like, "Oh, uh, what are, are you guys cousins, family?" And we're like, "Oh, we're best friends." Oh, I see you guys all the time, always together. I'm like, yeah, like that's good. That's, yeah. that's you know, that's good. <laughs> nah, she was a little jealous. That's so real. <laughs> was like, oh, uh, so we're like, what's the longest you guys go without like seeing each other? I was like, oh, maybe a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, the last time we see each other was probably like a couple of days ago, and but like one of those. It, I think it's a good thing, right? Like trying to be with your. Friend group because these are the people you feel safe. These are the yeah. few people you feel the best with at this point. You know what I'm saying? You, you can be you. You can be Wrong. you. Exactly. Yeah. Comfortable. <sighs> yes, because I think me and Pepe and probably yourself too, being around a lot of people, some like we don't know how much energy it takes. It's draining, <laughs> dude. Like it's the social battery. It, it is social battery. There you go. The social and your battery. Battery when you're around so many people, like no matter what, it's just. It drains you. Yeah, like I, I'm a trainer, so it's like I gotta I gotta deal with people every day. I'm yeah, like, I don't have to put up a fake thing, but it's like I obviously gotta be motivating. I gotta I gotta like be enthusiastic, but like when I get back home, like ah, oh, like I know I you just, guys already I can just chill. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys already open your drinks, but for all my people watching and uh, and following and supporting, damn, I hadn't opened mine either, so. <laughs> So if, you guys, over me, if you guys are listening to this right at 5 p.m., y'all are, man, day one. So oh, you I said 5 p.m.? Oh, grab, yourself, we dr- grab yourself a drink then. We grab drop at 5 p.m.? This. this is how non-knowledgeable my team is. Nah, I know it's 5 p.m. What are dro- you talking about? Okay, Jose. Thank you, Jose. <laughs> but if you guys are listening to this at 5 p.m., if you guys are before going to the gym, we got our Celsius going on. And if you're a little, Jose, if you're a little stressed, my boy Jose got a little buzzball going on. 7-Eleven liquor store, gas station. Ooh, 7-Eleven coming in clutch. 7-Eleven. But, um, yeah, no, like, I t- to the intro that we just said, like, social media is not always what you portray. Like, we show people what we want. We allow people into our lives to a certain extent because it could get draining, it could get tiring. You know, keeping a smile up, keeping energy up. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, it's, we're human. Everybody's going to get tired at one point, but you deserve a break after, you know, weeks over, weeks on, weeks on of work, constant work. So when we do podcasts, if you're in the podcast world, like, you give everything to one episode. Like, I mean, did we had talked about this earlier. We didn't talk about it completely, but you had said earlier, you mentioned, like, oh, what if we do two back-to-back but it's like, yo, it's so hard because we give everything to one episode. So to do it again one time, and I know we've done it before, like two, three in a day. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. It's draining, dude. It's draining. But I know, like, when we have to, we have to. Yeah. But to give our audience, our family, our followers, our, our second family, all of us and true us, it's like, yo, you're going to, this This is it. One time only. Because imagine that you, you don't. You, you're not authentic. I'm you're, a good actor. What's real? up? I'll keep it. I'm like, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Oh, so your social battery is like that that large? It's that large. Yeah. And I couldn't even me. I, no, nah, I mean, I think I can, I can probably, I can probably fake like the last bit of it. Uh-huh. But like the first one is good. 
like I don't have a regular nine to five, but when I did have a nine to five, uh, I was I was always looking for that five p.m. to hit just because I couldn't go to Susan. Like, hey Susan, how was your day? Like I don't yeah. care about your day, Susan. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> Susan, <laughs> I don't know a random name. Shout out Susan. What's Shout up, out Susan? Man, if we you're Susan you. listening to us, we love you. Don't hit up Jose. Do hit, hit, hit us up. up. I know, I <laughs> No, honestly, like, but it, it, it also go, it transfers into, like, we, we've heard it before, talked about it before, where, you know, when you meet up with your friends, you don't want to bombard them with all the negativity that you have in your life. Oh, facts. You, you, you want to let loose, let go, and like, hey, we're going to meet up today. We, I know we all have had a long week. How about we don't talk about our week unless, like, we need to, but let's just enjoy us right now. Let's enjoy this moment where we're relaxing. We get to forget about everything else that's happening around us, around our world, around our life, and this disconnect. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's us because, yeah, we always communicate through text or group chats or uh, on social media. We'll see, like, yeah. what's up. But we never go in depth and talking about, like, oh, how was your day or this happened to me or whatever, right? We'll always meet up either on the podcast or on the weekend. We go out yeah. or whatever, and then we'll talk about it or either energy drinks or a drink or whatever. But it's like... We always talk about that on a specific day instead of like, all right, let's save it on the weekend or whatever. Whenever we're free, we yeah. meet up and let's just keep it kind of neutral because that's our our time. We have to. And I think and we like all, that. I think we're all pretty good, right? About knowing that we need to get us, we need to get something off our chest. Facts. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, I need a drink. It's never really about the drink because <laughs> let's be real, we could be somewhere <laughs> drinking a water bottle and we'd yeah. be fine. It's more yeah. about a. Hey, we use the drink as an excuse to like see each other. It's like, come here, please. It's like, come here, I need yeah. you. It's like the drink is one of those like, hey, I need to talk to you. I need to get something off my chest. Facts. Something's been bothering me, and so like, machi- I trust you guys enough. Yeah. That like I want to open up to you, but it's yeah. The machismo one is like we don't want to be like, hey, I, like let's talk. I need, <laughs> I need to talk. I need help. I right, know. Yeah. Let's grab a drink, you know, <laughs> and then we'll talk. Yeah. So, do you think that that's just something that has we've learned along the way where? Instead of us saying, hey, brother, like, I need to talk. Like, we're best friends. We're really cool with each other. But we still don't have that, like, encouragement to be like, yo, brother, I need to talk. Can we talk? You're just like, yo, let's let's go out. Let's go get a drink. Or let's sit. Hey, let's go eat. Or, hey, when you get a chance, give me a call. It's, It's not us being straightforward, but it's us giving a hint. Like, hey, like, if you have time, I would love for us to go and sit down. It's like, he needs me. I don't she think we're it. used to asking for help, help in a yeah. sense or yeah. just Facts. for Going somebody to drink. talk to. So it's just one of those things where it's like, hey, let me see if they want to drink. But I don't care about the drink. I just want to talk to them. Yeah. Like we you don't know? grow up that way. Like just like, oh, like why are you sad? Just, uh, you know, just yeah. get over it. <laughs> That's mm. typically what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because even been. even like when I, one of the, some of the big questions that we've had where it's like, Oh, when dating, some of the biggest question that's out there in social media is when starting to date someone, do you let your partner in on what you're going through? It's kind of a kind of like a gray area because obviously you do want to be communicative to your partner. You obviously want to open up to through time. But also, I feel like that masculine energy, you don't want to give off like, hey, like, I don't want to tell you that I'm sad or weak and you may see me in a less masculine energy because mm. i feel like at least i would like someone to have that feminine energy i would like to keep my masculine energy and i don't want them to see me in a different light so it's kind of that gray area you gotta like get that fine line like open up but not too much as in like hey i'm always complaining about my feelings right and mm. i think that's why friends are pretty handy you know like mm-hmm. at least yeah. when it comes to just your daily life it's yeah. one of those things where it's like you can open up and they won't judge you. You can be yourself around each yeah. other, and it's okay. It's totally acceptable. There's zero judgment there. So I think that's one of those things where finding a group of best friends kind of helps a lot, like at least with the psychological aspect of it, right? But then they ask, like, oh, why are you so close with these people? And it's like, yo, like, I want to tell you what I'm going through, but at the same time I can because, one, we're, we're early on in the age, and I don't want to bombard you with all of my emotions, everything I'm going through, but... You know, these people have seen me from the worst to now where I am, and they stuck with me. And <clears throat> it, it's it's a gray area. 
You know, you don't want to buy, like, if you started dating someone and you really like them and you see a future with them or... Oh, for sure. If it's I, just started, yeah. that's, like a, that's like a red flag. Like, don't pour your emotions onto them. Insecurities. Oh. Into, right? Like, that's that's oh. red flag number one. Yeah, exactly. Jealousy like, and insecurity, it's like, nah, dude. Like, if if you don't trust me, yeah, yeah. like, I can't be with well, you. Well, not like, even, not, not so, so not to that point. It's to the point of, say you're going through something personal, but yeah. you just started dating someone. It's like you're battling your own demons and you want to come find in someone. And it's, as much as you want to come find in her because you're like, yo, she's trustworthy. I, she's very honest, blah, blah, blah. It's like, but if I do that, how is she going to look at me? Because as a man, I'm going to have to lead. Yeah. I got to lead this relationship. So if I'm not there 100%, she's going to be like, well, I'm tired of being in my masculine energy. Yeah. I have. I want to be in my feminine energy, but if I have a man that's not in that in that area right now, or has like time lapses, it's like, how can I even be there? So it's like, it's a gray area. But red flags. There's someone <laughs> asked us like, are you guys single? But pff, I don't know. It's 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 a gray area. It's a gray area. Situations are a little gray right now. <laughs> But, you know, I'm glad that we, we brought up uh, red flags because we had some people okay. that that brought up some, some amazing red flags. You guys react how you want. So, a red flag in a man or a girl, this is what our people said, when they are on multiple dating apps. Oh. What All I'm going to say is that's like a, a black a flag bloody at that red point. Flag, burgundy? Bro. Burgundy, right? <laughs> yeah. But the dark red color, the darkest red oh, come is. on. No. If, they, if, they're in a, if they're dating you and they're still on dating apps, hey, you're doing but something wrong. They haven't wrong. deleted it? Ooh. You, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, actually, if you met them through the dating app and then they delete it, okay. Maybe it's okay, you know. Maybe it's, it's okay. okay. But yeah. if they keep it while you're still dating, they're keeping multiple, the options open. They're keeping yeah, their options open. Exactly. Multiple, that's crazy. <laughs> they're not ready to Can settle down. <laughs> while in a relationship, is liking and following multiple women while they have a girlfriend. I mean, look, if I already follow that person I'm and their posts are fire, like, I'm going to keep liking them. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. As fucked up as it sounds. Uh, oh, it's not really my you're fault. walking you're red flag. Insecure. You're walking red flag. It's not my fault. You're insecure. However, however, if you tell me that bothers you, then I may, I may like stop. You deleting? You deleting? I'm not deleting my social media. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not going to delete it for you. Delete yours. That way you don't. That way you don't see me liking my stuff. What's up? <laughs> That's like, a red flag. <laughs> Dude, we're no, just gaslighting. I know, gaslighting. Gaslighting. Gas you expect me to delete my social? Nah, dude, you like, delete it so you don't see me. You like, delete it. If it's bothering you, it ain't bothering it's, me. It's coming. People went off when they lack when they lack personal hygiene. Well, that's nasty. Their restroom is dirty. Toothpaste on the sink. They leave trash full of dirt. Clothes on the floor. Dusty room. <laughs> we clean up as women. The house already loving man who is clean. Damn. Uh, do they have roaches in the kitchen? Damn, bro. Damn. That's crazy. They better clean up by themselves. The, Hygiene's a big, it's a big thing. Uh, I think when it, when someone says hygiene, it's like, are they getting a haircut regularly if it's a guy, right? Their smell. Oh, are they wearing no. cologne, deodorant? It's like, how do you have a job like that? Like, if you don't have a haircut, you don't smell good. Like, you don't even keep up with your image. Ooh. How do you have a job, bro? You dating crazy. unemployed people? That's a red flag. That's to, crazy. To I feel attacked right now. What's up? <laughs> to to look like, to Pepe's comment. A red flag is when a man seeing their social media following look like they went to an all girls school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Here's one. How about would you guys date somebody if their following is more than the followers? Yeah, I don't care. At this point, I don't care. It's like, look, we're in the, we're kind of like in it now at this point. We're in the social media industry. So it's kind of one of those I, things where it's like, yeah, well, I'm sorry. I, it's it's gonna just be a under, thing. It's going to be under the four digits. Maybe. I care. I care <laughs> yeah, about about the the comment section, the DM section. That's no, all. Like, it. Following, I, we know it doesn't matter really. But what what's the interaction? What's the reply? What's yeah, the, exactly. yeah, what's the what reply? reply? If it's one of those things where it's like, she's like, hey, I'm taking. Oh, damn, all right. Cool, she respects you. 
Yeah. But if she's entertaining those uh, those comments, then that's a little different because she's literally, like you said, if the following's big, all these people have access to those comments and messages, right? Those interactions going back yeah, and forth. Yeah. So it's it's a little tricky. When they're a mama's boy. I don't know. I love my mom. I don't know my mom too. She's my best friend. I don't care. Don't get me wrong. When they're too dependent on their mom, their parents, I get it. That's a red flag. Yeah. But if they just love their mom because their mom, our moms are amazing, you're just jealous. And you're just the wrong red flag. How about you're this? Just... You're driving. Okay. Oh. And it's, oh. Going in it's, the a, front seat? it's a girl and your mom in the car who's going in the front seat. My mom. 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 They don't <laughs> like it? Get off the car. You know what? I'm going to send you an Uber. What's up? No, I'll send you an Uber. I won't even send an Uber. <laughs> you know what? You really want to go follow me. What's up? No, but it, if, they're, if they're a real partner, they're a real woman, and they understand, oh, and they respect their mom, respect your mom, say you're going to go pick up your mom. I'm paying attention. Are you getting off to get in the back, or are you Dude. staying in the front to let my mom in the back? Those little, like, and then little it's, gestures like that, it's and it's the same when you're picking up their mom, right? Because there's times where it's like, hey, yeah, like, hey, uh, we're gonna pick up my mom. All right, cool. What's up? Let's go. Now, is she gonna? Is your mom gonna go in the back, yeah. or is your mom gonna go in the front? Yeah, That's I'm, I'm driving it too. <laughs> I'm, driving, I'm driving their car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I'm crazy. the chauffeur. <laughs> All right, they both go in the back. This is definitely a red flag when they bring up their ex in the first date. <sighs> I think I think if you're asking about each other's past and they bring it up, okay, cool. But if they're just like bringing it up naturally, then well, they're still not over there. They're ex. not over there. They're not over there. Even ex. if they're overly excited, like if say my ex used to do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is my ex and I's best like, oh, uh, favorite my restaurant. Ex, my ex used to know my favorite drink already. Why'd you give me this? Yeah. Oh, me and my ex we used to go to the one down the street. <laughs> well, motherfucker, go with your ex. If you really miss him that much, go send him a text. Pay the tab. <laughs> At that point, tab is half and Anyone half. Request me. <laughs> At, wait, what? At that point, the tab At, is it's half, half and half. half. Oh, that's crazy. Pay your part. Pay my part. So you don't pay um, the first day. Oh, if if that's happening, definitely not. But if as a man, it, the tab is under me. I got this. All right, all right. Honestly, I'll take the L. Like I can't let them see me like that. I, I don't care. I'll dispute it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm mean, I'm mean, All right, so. I mean that's red flags, right? Like there's some, there's a lot, there's many, there's, yeah. there's a lot of reasons why people <laughs> are hesitant to get into their ship because nowadays their ships are, they come with a lot. It could either come with a lot of baggage, which is like people trying to heal from the traumas or whatever the case is, or it's just simply the fact where it trust issues. And then bringing up a oh well my ex did this to me or that to me, but it's like yo if you're trying to get into a new relationship. You got to let go of all that bullshit. What happened in the past should stay in the past. Mr. Conor McGregor w once said, once said, if you live in the past, you're depressed. If you live in the future, you're anxious. But if you live in the now, you're happy. So it's just like trying to put that all into perspective. It's like, yeah, you're right. I'm trying to worry too much about what I'm trying to do six months from now, a year from now. And if I'm worrying about that, then I'm like, dude, dude, I'm running out of time, running out of time. Yeah. And I'm remembering too much of what happened a year ago, 10 years ago of being heartbroken, being let go, being left out, not feeling enough, not feeling worthy. Well, then all those sad thoughts come into your head and boom. Yeah, you know what? I am depressed. But right now, bro, my life right now is good. Yeah. I should be happy. I just feel like you got to love yourself in order for you to love someone else. But like we said that so many times in this podcast, yeah. but it's like you gotta whatever trauma, whatever healing you need to be doing, do it on your own time. Don't Facts. don't trauma dump on somebody else and expect them to fix it because it's gonna end up the same way the past relationship happened, friendship relationship, right? You just gotta be good within yourself so you can be better with your next relationship or at least love yes. the next relationship, right? Yeah. Well, on this topic of relationships, someone asked. Is it bad for an ex-partner to move on fast? I think my first ever real girlfriend. It's like, <laughs> of like f four years, bro. It was like... Uh, How fast did they move on? 
two weeks. That person was there. That was crazy. No, I already I know. I, <laughs> that person had to help them pack their bags. Insane. My boy, what's up? <laughs> crazy thing is, it, they did. Oh. Yeah. No, they did. I swear. He was story. just a friend, but then we got close and... No, he helped that's pack, a lie. And then we got close while we were packing. <laughs> the whole time, I he tripped. was the reason she started packing. Damn, Bro was packing. crazy. Bro, it's... It, it, how we always... When, it, it's funny how we say, but it's... I know everybody gets this. When girl. a girl says they have guy friends and then they break up with their boyfriends, but then that guy friend at the stair, he's just waiting for the opportunity. Listen, it but is, it just depends on a lot of the times, on a lot of people, right? It just depends. It's, like, it's one of those things where it's like, I can be your friend. It doesn't mean I want to. But if you see them holding hands two weeks, a month from now. Oh, yeah, that's completely different. But that's completely different. It's, it's one very of those rare for you, a girl to have an actual guy best friend or at least a guy friend that they're close like it, it, it's so rare other than that that guy either is attracted to them or just wants is just waiting for the moment so in now my opinion. i'm gonna just play devil's advocate right oh right. okay does that work the other way too though like can you have a girl best friend or just a girlfriend and not want anything like let's say sexual to a yeah, because I could see both ways around it. But so can she, though, no? No, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it's it's those rare cases that it's fine on both sides. You get me? So it's fine? Yeah. Okay. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. I may, I may be stupid, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. Just, just because I do have a girl best friend that I've known since elementary school. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't mean you want to do anything. Yeah, exactly. So right. it's like, I can see that on the other perspective, too, because yeah. I'm living it. So you understand. Yeah, you understand I, I would understand. It. But I think there's a maturity. That too. There has to be maturity when you have to understand where, like, hey, this is just my friend. This is my sister. This is my brother. But it's just like if your partner isn't introducing you to them off the rip and respecting you and giving you your place, then there's red flags. But there's people that don't, that no matter what, it's like I could introduce you or she could introduce and you're still slightly jealous. Of our relationship. Oh. How does that work? You know? Why are you so insecure? I think when you have a, say, the a best friend of the opposite gender. Yeah. That best friend has to needs to understand if they can or they want to, that your partner is now your focus. Because now you have to make sure your partner feels loved, feels the attention, feels the importance, and knows her place. Right, this is my person. You come first, and as much as this is my best friend and I love them, they understand that you come first. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to build the future with your partner. Yeah, exactly. If this is your partner, your best friend is gonna be your best friend no matter what happens. And that's where like it comes into: Does my do my friends support me in everything I do? Well, it depends on who you have around you. There's people that are very situational that, yeah. depending on the situation. They'll be there, but if if not, if you're for whatever reason, your best friend, if it's the opposite gender, gets jealous of your relationship, there's something there. Yeah, there's something there. there. Something there's there. something there. And you choose. Oh, I'm sorry, I love you too much. <laughs> and you choose. <laughs> sorry, I love you. But if if you guys date my boys and I come first, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I come That's first. Right? It's like nah, fuck that. I'm still He's number the one. one. Calling at midnight. <laughs> I'm the number one. <laughs> no, it, like honestly, like. It people, in order for people to understand certain friendships, they got to be involved in it. Of course, like they have to see the ins and outs. And uh, I know I didn't want to get serious so fast, but you know the video I showed you guys earlier. You know, I wish I had someone in my life that just told me, "I got you. I have your back." And it's like I have to go through all these bad things in my life. Who have I had around me that could say they were there when I was down bad and say, you know what? I know you're going to struggle right now. I know you're in a bad season right now. I know you can't offer what you usually offer right now, but I'm going to be here with you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, of course. that's where these relationships come in clutch because it's like, you know, bro, I'm not, I'm, not who I, I'm not who I usually am. I can't offer the world right now. I'm down and out. Yeah. But these are the people that sit around me. So... Why do I have a relationship with my guys? 
It's because when we had nothing in our pockets, we're still running it. We're still together. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're spending the beer. Yeah, exactly. Now that we're up, of course we're all together. We we're supposed to live this lavish lifestyle together, because the people that you suffer with are the ones that you want to enjoy the riches with. But if you're only here for the riches, then you shouldn't even be here at this point. Because damn, you didn't go through the gutter with us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, oh well. And I'm sure other people that are listening to this, they've heard it before. Man, well, you treat your best friends better than me. Well, shit, they've been here before long, longer been here than you. Longer. <laughs> they they've see me at my worst. You yeah. only want to see me on weekends. They see me Monday through Friday. It's like I need something. I can hit them up. I need a drink, even though it's not about the drink. They're yeah, there. yeah, because it, it, like, yeah, there's a difference of like, hey, let's go out. Hey, let's let's go out, but. I don't want to go out. Like, I just want to see you. Like, there's yeah. that difference. I just need to talk to yeah. somebody. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to find some peace and some comfort. And you're that peace and comfort for me. And we can just probably just sit down on the couch or outside and not say a single word. But we know our company means a million to us. Sometimes you just need somebody to actually be by your side, you know? Not say a word and not judge you and not ask anything of you. I'm in charge of that next time. <laughs> it's going to be in this table. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> Fuck. Damn, where were we? It gives me a, be- it gives me a better right. chance to, to read back the love, the love theory. Go for it and read the love theory. No, I got a follow-up question. I don't know if you guys heard that. Thanks to our, our great... Uh, no, let me, read it, let me read it back and then we'll right. just go off of it. Yeah, let me, let me just gonna, read it back. He's not going to include this part. He's going to edit Fuck it out. Fuck no, I'm going to edit it out. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to reread the love theory. Reread. All right. Why, fr- Why are you rereading? Because <laughs> my dumbass forgot to press uh, record on uh, on the ah, thing. See, love that. But it's cool though. All right, so the love theory. So you're, sp- it's known to- that you have three loves in your lifetime, right? So your first love is the puppy love, the person who teaches you about love, the one where years later you look back and be like, I know that wasn't true love, but that's what I felt love was. Your second love is apparently the one that causes you the worst heartbreak. Because it's the deepest that you ever felt. The one that you tell your kids about when your daughter asks how it feels to fall in love, that's the one that you reference with. The third time you fall in love, it's with it's supposedly the person you end up with. It's what your other two loves brought you to. Your first one, which you thought was true love, and your second one that caused you the heartbreak is what brings you to your third one. Right? The conversation we just had, it's like, and I brought it up. What if your third love is just the second person coming back at a later time or in a in a better moment in time where they changed? Right person, or, wrong time, right? Right person, wrong time. Or as previous said, there's no such thing as right person, wrong time. It's just the way they were at that time. It's like just... It, like, there's two ways to go about that. I agree with you guys, of but course. then also, um, it's more so of the God's timing, right? Like, there's a reason it didn't work out. Yes, you may fight to make it work again, but there was a reason it didn't work out the first time. But I, I, I do believe in right person, wrong time. If the the both parties change. If you guys work on it together, right? I mean, you not, gotta let, I'm sorry, not together. Just work on it individually. You got to let go of the past. Let before the you past. before you start this next chapter of that relationship, if there is, you have to make sure you let go of the past. Now, there are certain things that some may not let go. And what is that thing, right? Because so, you, yeah. you talked about it prior. Before, yeah. <laughs> uh, if, there was, if there's trust <laughs> issues, infidelity... Would you would you let that go or would you? I feel like I can't speak on it like as in confidently saying, "Oh, I'll forgive you," whatever it is. But at least for for a fact, I know that if you cheated on me physically, I would not. I, I just wouldn't forgive you. What about emotionally? Isn't that just as bad though? It's just yeah. as bad, but it's it's just like. But not as bad. It's a little different. <laughs> not as bad. <laughs> oh, it's different. What's up? It's cheating, but it's not cheating. It, no, it is cheating, but it's yeah. just not. 
It's just not as like. I it didn't know. get physical. Yeah, let's, yeah. Just, didn't, let's just say that it didn't get physical. I guess, but it's like, it, it's a great area, you know. That's the title of this podcast: Great Area. <laughs> great, area. great Area. Yeah, Dude, we're literally well, gray areas. like to that point, right? When I've, I've been listening to this, where it's like, when you have a trying man, you got to give him his flowers. If he's showing up for you, showing you attention, you know, doing all the little things that you want, right? Flowers, dates, texting you how you're doing, if you need anything. But you're not giving him that recognition that he's actually trying and trying to be there, trying to be there for you. What what does that do to him, man? He feels unappreciated. It's like, why am I going to keep trying? Yeah, especially like uh, at least with, I feel like with growing up in a Mexican household, like just today's society, it's just, we don't get those flowers at all. Like yeah. Just trying or being there, right? Exactly. Yeah. So when you're not we're not when you're not getting that appreciation, then he's like, Why am I gonna stay here? Why am I gonna keep doing it? If this person is not appreciating who I am and what I'm doing, yeah. why am I gonna keep showing that? And yeah, you may love them or love that person or have this idea of like, yeah, we're gonna be something great. But if at the end of the day they're not giving you your flowers, then you're going to have that emptiness inside your heart or that resentment of like, man, I'm doing X amount of things and you're not giving two fucks about me or showing me that you're appreciative. Mm -hmm. Then why am I staying here when someone else may, right? One man's treasure, one man's trash can be somebody else's treasure. So it's like, if they don't appreciate you, what do you do? You stay and hope it works out, or do you leave? You can only, like, try so much, right? <clears throat> I feel like if you communicate that of how you're feeling and how you don't feel appreciated and they don't change, I feel like that's the only way to do it. Like, you just got to leave. You have like, to. Yeah, I mean. You have to. But especially if, because I feel like communication is such a big thing. People don't do it. And you willingly do it and stay still, don't listen. And, I mean, then you got to leave. Yeah, right? And how long do you keep trying? Yeah. That's the thing, right? Because you can only try so much. How long do you keep on dreaming that it's going to change and that it's going to work out? It's going to be better. I don't know. You tell us, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's coming from a it's place of a a hurt. No. Who hurt you? Answer yes or no. <laughs> Have you ever had someone to show you so much in every single way possible that they just care less about you? Wait, repeat, repeat that? the question? <laughs> 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 Insert the equations right here with that gif. Have you, ever, have you ever had someone sh- show you so much in every way possible that they can care less about you? They can give two fucks about you. Yeah, it's just... It's just hard. Like, it's making excuses for them. You don't want to accept it. You don't, don't want to accept, accept it, it that they don't love you as much as you love them. But it's like... Not even that. It's just like how, how you said, like just the disrespect or just not caring about how you feel, right? Yeah. It's just you don't want to accept or you just don't want to. Uh, well, I mean, everything's the, the action speaks for itself. But yeah, then of you course. You're trying to make excuses for, like, for them, right? Yeah. So how long do you make excuses for them, though? And when do you walk away? When do you walk away when you felt this should be the person? Because they made you change, they made you be better, they made you feel happy when you're together. But when push came to shove, they showed you everywhere possible, like, yo, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. Feel attacked, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Next question, I don't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Next. I'm going to skip it. I don't know, I, I feel know. like it takes a lot of willpower. It takes a lot of... I feel like if it's your yeah. first time um, experiencing that, you're you're not gonna have an answer. But I feel like if it's your second, at least hopefully second time you learn from your experiences, I just feel like once you see a, a first sign in that, or at least the first disrespect, or like hey, like I'm, like if you see them doing the things that they're not gonna be there for you, I feel like you should immediately just either communicate or leave, depending on how deep of a connection you have with that person. Yeah, I think that's where like. People forget that when you put someone through that type of pain, 
the person you become after is who they created. Truth. Right? Oh, well, you never were this way, or you never did this, or you never were like that or responded like that. Well, yeah, that was before you did all of this. Oh, I used to be in phone reach to you or easy access, but after you showed me that I can't have that same way with you, well, why do you... Why do you have that resentment with me now? Because I became who you wanted me to become, which is someone not attached, someone not available, someone that is, could care less if they get a reply or not. So it's, it goes back to when you feel unappreciated. Mm -hmm. It's like when a guy feels appreciated, he's there and he shows you. But when he doesn't, I got to go. And it, it may take it, it may take us guys... A little longer than usual because we're like, nah, you know what? I know it's going to change. It's going to happen. And then it doesn't. And we're like, well, it took me 10 times to realize this, but I realize it now. 10 times later, huh? And then once it does, there's no going back. Because like, why do you blame me for being who I am now? You caused this. But at that time, it's like, well, you were the right person, wrong time. Or maybe we both were at the wrong time when we met or when our pro when our paths crossed. So it's just like, I know a lot of people go through this shit, right? Like we go through this, they, other people that are listening to us, which again, we, we love you guys and appreciate you guys bringing up these topics to us. But it's just like, that goes into friendships and relationships, right? Right people, just the wrong time. Yeah. You know, you may be dealing with some healing and I come into your life. You're not healed, but I am. <laughs> I can't. I can't fix you. Bro, he wants to go out, and I don't want to go out. <laughs> I don't want to go out no more, guys. Yeah, because um, you know, I think uh, I, there's a there's a quote that that really has really resented resented with me, and kind of I think it applies to all of us. But it says, "Don't live your don't live your life waiting until tomorrow or next week because we just don't know if tomorrow will come." So if you want to do something today, if you want to take that leap of faith, you want to you want to start that business, you want to take that shot at whatever it is, do it now because tomorrow we just don't know if we get to wake up. We don't know if we get to make it home. We don't know if for whatever reason tomorrow when we wake up might be the last time. So if you don't do it now, you live in regret of, oh man, I should have. I should have done this at this time. It's like, yo. Yeah, I had a... Back in college, I had a, a professor slash mentor. Um, we would do accounting. And if you guys know what accounting entitles, it's just a bunch of, like, credits and debits and, like, numbers and spreadsheets and stuff. And it's, like, as soon as you start, you want to go home. <laughs> like, you Ooh. see all those charts, yeah. you, you want to go home, right? But one thing he told me, I, I guess it's been sticking with me, um, it's more so, like, you can go home anytime you want. But are you going to be accomplished? Are you going to feel good about yourself leaving with the work you've done today? Mm. And I feel like I've just applied that with everything, with ever, ever since then and with just life. Like, did I live today as much as I wanted to? Like, did I, did I achieve as much as I, can, I could and be happy with it when I go yeah. back to sleep? With work, with uh, talking to my friends, uh, socializing, everything. Yeah. I think that's where it applies to, like, playing the victim card, too, right? Like, well, before we get into that victim card, it's just, like, I, I hate living my life in, or I used to. I, I used to hate living my life in, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have seen this person. I should have seen that. It's like, yo, like, if I don't live my life the way I want to, on my terms, not everybody else's terms, on my terms, I'm going to live my life in a, man, I should have done that. But I didn't because that person told me not to. I should have. But it's like, you yeah. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I know high school, right after high school, trying to figure out who we are and what we're doing. Yeah, yeah I guess, like, yeah, we all oh, because of him, him, her, her. Cool, I get it. But the older we get, if you're still living in that middle frame, what are you doing? Who are you living life for? Mm -hmm. Are you living it for you or are you living it for somebody else or to make somebody else happy? And I again, we go back to the same thing. Don't don't trauma dump your friends because of how unhappy you are with your life. 
take control. You're an adult. You have a job. You make money. You, you're conscious of your decisions. I feel attacked. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I you're, saw that. I felt that in my soul. You're conscious of your decisions, so it's just like, what's stopping you from living your life on your own terms? Right? Like, again, someone said, like, someone having a conversation with someone, they were like, dude, life is just unhappy. Why is it unhappy? Oh, well, I got to take care of so many things and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, do you have to? Well, if I don't, who's going to do it? There you go. So you're taking care of everybody else. But not yourself. But not yourself. And I can't talk shit because I do the same. So it's, <laughs> It was like sh- shifting that mind frame of, oh, I have to do this. No, I get to do this. Yeah. Like, I get to provide for someone else. I get to get up every single day. Other people, like, they don't, unfortunately, they don't, they can't get up. Like, they're not with us or they just physically can't, you know? There, there's, a, there's, there's bigger problems than the ones that we have course that's the people that's what people don't get is that we think this is the end of the world but realistically bro look up open your eyes there's bigger problems than the ones that we have the problems that we have we can change it if we want yeah. or we can let go of certain things if we really wanted to but we because we choose not to because we feel like we need to puts us in this this line of depression and this like Seen coal that's just draining us at the same time. And it's like, well, why are you staying there? Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's just your household or trying to take care of your family. Brother, sister, the biggest thing is if you take care of you, that's the only way you're going to be happy. And if you're happy, you can take care of everybody else. But if you're not, then we're almost 30 years old, bro. What's going to happen? 40 years old, 50 years old. Don't say that. Don't say Don't that. Say that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm surrounded crazy. by a lot of old ass Still, motherfuckers. I, I'm only 25, guys. <laughs> but it's... 30s, but hey. No, on Instagram, I've seen a lot of reposts of uh, this quote saying, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. The grass is greener when you water it. Like, I don't know. Who, I've seen a lot of people. Oh, we've all seen Yeah, that. we've seen it. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's where it goes back to where, like, people try to shift, let go of this over here because it's not greener and they want to go somewhere else where it is. But it's the same no, thing, you, bro. You got to take care of it. Maybe it's not greener because you didn't take care of it. Like, you got to you take care of it. Yeah, you're, you're not watering. You got to take care of, like, whatever you're trying to do. I think that applies to everything, right? It's yeah. one of those things where it's like the grass. It's just a metaphor for your soul. You yeah, know, exactly. Ooh. You don't work on it. Your job, your relationships, your family. Like self-love. Self-love. Yeah. yeah. Like, you got to make don't, sure everything is on check. You got to make sure you got you take care of it, right? You don't nurture it. You don't take care of yourself. You're literally going to feel empty and dry up inside, and it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect jump into this this other quote. And, and this one really, I, I sent it to you earlier, and it's yeah. honestly, it's just really hit. I realized people never love me for me. It was just the way I showed up for them, the way I held them, the way I had their back, the way I was always a stable one, the way my mindset stimulated theirs, the way I looked past their flaws but wanted the best for them, the way I was always loyal no matter what happens. I am this person because this is the person I always wanted in my life. Yeah. And I think this is, it ties into like how we, we had a conversation where it's like, I'm tired, bro. Like I'm showing up for so many people and just to get the same result at the end of the day, which is what is it? They're leaving me or I'm getting disappointed or they're not showing up the way that I want them to or expected them to. So it's just like the way I'm showing up for everybody in this world and everybody that's in my life, it's it's who I needed this whole time in my own life. It ties back to what we said earlier. I just needed someone to tell me, hey, I know it's not good right now, but I got you. I'll hold it down. And it's like you become the person you want someone else to be for you. And you show up for them, but at the same time, it's one like, of those things where it's crazy because you're showing up for them, but you're not showing up for yourself because all your time is vested in them. Yeah, and then when you need that type of person to show up, who shows up? 
Nobody. Nobody. And I think that's when we get disappointed and we're just like, why try? Why open myself up one more time when I know at the end of the day. So you just shut down. And that's what we were talking about when yeah. we were having a drink. <laughs> a drink last Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it was it's depressing one of those Sunday. Things. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, no, well, yeah, well, it was Sunday. Yeah. It was one of those where it's like, why am I going to keep trying? Why am I going to keep doing things when no matter what, it's the same result every single time? Yeah. Like, what's the point of giving it my all? What's the point of trying once more? And at the end of the day, it's going to be the same exact shit coming back. Whether I try hard or whether I give it the least amount of effort. The result's going to be the same. Why am I going to keep trying? Yeah. I think that's where we're I've been stuck. I think we've yeah. been stuck. Yeah, right? definitely. I've been stuck about it, too. Just trying to, like, I mean, I know everybody goes through this and throughout their season, but it's like, I keep getting disappointed by people. Why is it? And then that quote that I just said is this. I'm showing up for people because this is the way I want people to show up for me. And it's like, wow, I can't get that. Why is that? What am I? It goes back to, it turns into like a me problem. What am I doing wrong? What did I do in order to get this or or deserve this? It's like, am I not worthy of people wanting to be around me? Am I not worthy of people wanting to be there for me? Like, what's wrong with me, right? Am I not worthy of that love? That loyalty? Mm. That friendship? <laughs> Damn. Damn. I need a shot. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> a water. Let's go. Water. Yeah, no, it's... um. I, th- I think it's definitely... Uh, it's definitely a hard one, a hard pill to swallow, is understanding that... Uh, we heard I heard in another quote before where it's like we keep getting we keep getting let down. This is like the playing the devil's advocate on it. We keep getting let down because we're giving responsibility to others to show up for us the way we want them to, but knowing damn well that they cannot show up for us like that. Like I know you cannot show up for me in the way I want you to, but I'm gonna expect you to. And the moment you don't, so I'm going to hate you for it. You Whose just, fault is it? You just know you're laying yourself down in the end. <laughs> you lay yourself down in that <laughs> yeah. one, but it's not even yeah. you already know. It's not bad. Yeah. It's you. Yeah. So it's just like, I know, I hope you change throughout this process. But I know but, you can't. But something, is, yeah, something inside me tells me, I know you really can't. And the moment you don't show up for me the way I want you to. I mean, it just co- <laughs> goes to show those first impressions or like those first like like messing up the first time of not showing up the f- like the first time it's going to impact how we think about you or of how or how we think yeah. of like the next timeline is yeah. there's yeah. so many so many chances that we can give you but how many it chances has to come enough? to an end yeah it has to come to an end how many chances do you give people that you love i don't think there's a right number a million it depends on the situation right I think it just depends on whenever you're tired of being let down. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) It's a, it could be a a one, two, three, four, five. And it's like, yo, it's a, it's a, it's a double edged sword. If I leave now, I'm going to feel like I failed you because I left too soon. But if I stay, the person, (laughs) I'm going to keep getting disappointed. And the person that's going to get hurt is myself. So what would I rather do? Let you down and hurt you or disappoint you or keep hurting myself waiting for you to show up for me the way I want you to. And I think most of us here will be disappointed all the time over letting other people down. Yeah. We'll disappoint ourselves. And then feel bad because they told us that we left too early or too soon. I miss y'all. I'm gonna just say that. I miss y'all. It's tough, dog. I think at the end of the day, it's just friendships, relationships, timing. It all comes into play. But if we're talking about it in the business aspect, yo, 
if we're talking about it just in life in general, this is in a broad aspect for everybody. The one thing that never apologizes for moving on is time. Yeah. Don't give a fuck who you think you are or, or what what position you're in. The one thing that will never apologize for keep moving on and keep taking is time. Once it's gone, it's gone. You ain't getting it back no matter you're how hard never you getting try. it back. You could try to replicate it, but I promise you it's never going to be the same. It won't. And if you don't do it now, tomorrow, who knows too what late, happens. Too late. Yeah, I mean, you may not get that chance to do it again. And that applies to everything in life, right? Everything. Every, everybody. Friendships, relationships, jobs, opportunities. Like, once they're like, gone, they're heard gone. It, heard it countless times. All, all started tomorrow. Bro, you're like 29. You've been saying this since you were 16. Yeah. When's that tomorrow? Yeah. As men, our word is our bond. If I tell you I'm going to start something and I don't do it, then he's just a liar. Oh, you don't mean that. I heard that 10 other times. But it's just, again, when is when is the right time? When it, Bro, now. What do you got to lose now? If back then you had X amount of things to lose and you lost it, now what do you got to lose? X amount of things more? It's If you don't do it now, you'll hate yourself in six months, oh, a year man. from now. Even if you fail, as long as you started, you tried, you genuinely tried, it doesn't matter if you if you succeeded or you failed, you at least did that part. The, the hardest thing is to start. Yeah. That jump, that leap of faith. Yeah. Try yourself out. How do you know you're gonna fail? And if you did, take it as a lesson. Exactly. Remember a failure. You fail. You, Bro, get you back can start up so many LLCs. Again. If you start talking business wise, you can like a hundred dollars, start a whole series, make another name if you need yeah. to. Yeah, and it, and now it goes into who do you take advice from? The person that said they were going to start a business or the person that started the business? Well, I'm sorry, I know you have great ideas, but tell me what you put into play. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing. Sorry, brother. Sorry, trust sister. You. I can't. I can't trust you. I don't believe you. I take it from people that dream bigger than me, people that have bigger businesses than me, and people that have bigger bigger visions than me. Those are the people I take. I take advice from the people that have done it, the people that are doing it, the people that are going to do it. And they have everything in plan and they're working their way. Not the person that, uh, in six months from now, when taxes come in or in six months from now, when all life is in in straight, bro, we know life is never going to get straight. It's a roller coaster ups and downs. You you just never know when you're going to start this. You may start this at the lowest or you may start this when it's at the highest. But what are you going to do it? So that's as as much as respect as I could be with everybody. In order for me to take advice from anybody, I got to see you doing it or have done it or have bigger visions than me. But if you don't and you don't have anything, it's just all talk. It's just all talk. I can't really take any advice from you because it's like, yeah, I know you have great ideas, but put it into play. Show me. Don't tell me. Show me. Uh, I think this it ties everything perfect into the April theory. The April theory. April what theory. Is that? So this fool been on TikTok <laughs> way too much. Way too I much. Way too it. much. I heard about it, but you know what? Explain it. So it's a theory that life starts to change and take off in the month of April. It said, according to astrology, if you guys are big astrologists. Oh, this fool. <laughs> The new year starts at the beginning of the beginning of every st- season, which is at the end of March, and bam, April comes. So that makes time for new beginnings and fresh starts. So for the people that don't know, I didn't know this, but Aries is one of the first signs in the astrology board and stuff. Astrologist now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Damn, he said, you know what? Career change. I'm gonna Career read change. I'm gonna read astro- astrological science. Astrology science. Astrology <laughs> science. Astrology, astrology As much as I was like, you know what? That theory is that that's stupid. I like hmm. Hmm. the way shit is going. So what does it say? Fresh, what does it fresh say? Beginning. It says fresh, fresh beginnings. Fresh beginnings and, and fresh opportunities. You know what? It could be true because there's a couple opportunities that have just presented themselves. And it's like, you know what? It may be true. It, it ties into like how we've always said it before, how we lived it too before. Shit has to br- fall apart, come to an end in order for new opportunities to come. I'm like, huh. Well. Well, at the beginning of this year, it's been a little, it's been a little rough. It's been a little, a little iffy. 
I'm like, all right. Things are falling apart. Let's just go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to fall apart, but we're here at midnight. That's why we're here at midnight on a Friday night. That's crazy. We're disassembling. Yeah. Well, you know, might as well just talk about our eggs. Do you guys have eggs? Eggs? Eggs. Oh. <laughs> what? I mean eggs. I got some eggs back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. We're going to see Jose cooking up. Dude, I wish I could have a chicken. I know Thor would eat them, though. Ah, oh, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> what order Jack in the Box right now? God. Please. No. <laughs> I could use a tendy. Actually, or before, three. Yeah, before I would get the, no, the tacos. I'll be honest. I don't. I like the tacos. I like the tacos, but you know how I don't fuck with cheese. You can order without cheese. I know, but yeah. they always get it wrong. They always throw cheese in there. No, they don't. That pisses me off. Honestly, once it's like midnight, like the they don't luck. care. They don't care. They're just like, the throw them in there. Luck. I have the worst luck then. Shit. No, so. What are some icks that the person of the opposite gender can do that just kind of just turns you off? Being jealous. Oh. Hate that. Or insecurity? Oof. <laughs> you Oof. Right off the bat. <laughs> right off the bat. That's it, though. They like to text. They like to reply. Ooh. Oof. Time management. Fucking hate that. Don't piss me off. Don't make me. Don't tell me Dude, it's an hour. And then speed run with <laughs> hours. Speed speed run. What's up? What else? Jose? Oh, with lack of text? He's razzled, frazzled. Any, any, <laughs> any, <laughs> any, any, <laughs> Razzled, frazzled, my boy. What's up? I, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Someone said when they, when the rose is better than their D. What? <laughs> when the rose is better than the their D? The, oh, what the fuck is a rose? <laughs> I mean, I have a, I, I think I know what's up, but, <laughs> but how do they have a D and a rose? How is that a Nick? How do you have both? Uh, they, is crazy. One is supplementary for the other. Someone said... Best sensing is sensing, though. I don't get it. Well, I feel, all right, here. Uh, a pick, uh, uh, an ick is like a pick-me. A pick-me person. Ooh. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard. Like I haven't really thought about that, actually. But yeah, yeah. but like just people who are just pick me is like just attention seekers. Literally us. <laughs> on the media podcast, world. we do social media. On the social media. media. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Someone said when they're trying to hit everybody else's vape. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know where that mouth is. Hey, bro, let me, let me hit it real quick. Hey, bro, uh, you, you sure? You sure? Just one hit. Just one hit. Snip. When, they, when they put the whole mouth in the bottle. <laughs> oh. So not, <laughs> not introducing your girl to people and Aww. acknowledge she's your girlfriend or a woman. Dude, yes, that one actually, yeah, yeah. Not like not, like, okay. not acknowledging you. You're not giving you your place. At that point, what's up, homie? We're good. Ah, uh, you went. You're homie now. We're homies. That's homies. crazy. We're homies. He would rather open my door and make an effort to always plan cute dates, even in being together for almost five years. That's not a nick. That's, that's a not plus. A nick. That's, that's good. A, that's, that's a, a plus. That's a, yeah. that's a keeper. That's Keep a green flag. <laughs> if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's your red flag? Your own red flag. I don't have red flags. <laughs> I'm colorblind. I'm green flag. I'm colorblind. <laughs> I don't see colors. Ooh. I shut down. Like I just like, I'm I'm I, I get mysterious as as uh, the people at Sixth Sense at night call me. Oh, I get mysterious. He gets mystical. They call him a mystical. <laughs> he gets a fucking crystal ball and everything. What's I up? feel like towards the end of the day, I'm just like out of social battery and I just don't talk to nobody. So and I, I get those random waves of like I, I don't want to fucking talk to you. No, what is yours? What's my red flag? Yeah. When I get in the mood, I'm in the mood. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Can't no one take me out of it unless Same. myself. If I'm mad, if I'm annoyed, if I'm irritated, if I'm feeling some type of way. Even if you put a drink in front of him, he's still going to drink it mad. He's going to be huffing and puffing the whole fucking yeah. time. He's going to be like, I don't fucking like this beer. It's warm. A little something to complain about. No, I think I guess I'm in the same boat. Like I just shut down and I just stopped talking to him. But then I think that's also one of those things where it's like, I would rather shut down 
than literally tell you how I really feel because I'm going to be honest. I blow up. Like, if, yeah, if that, I don't shut down, my other extreme is literally, I'm going to tell you how I really feel. So, Ooh. it's one of those things where it's like, it's a red flag. Mm-hmm. I mean, that I shut down, but it would be a redder flag yeah. if I were to really so, open up. Someone, yeah. someone said, saying I don't post as an excuse not to post your partner. <laughs> Deactivates the whole social media. <laughs> Damn, dude. Post is only on his close friends. It's just them. There's a couple people that do that. There's a couple people that do that. No names are gonna be mentioned. Oh shit. Nah, it. It's a couple aches, a couple aches out there. But honestly, my biggest one, if you lie to reply, take more than a couple hours. Like, bro, a simple fuck a text takes you ten seconds, thirty seconds. You have that in your day. When they're extremely loud. Like, ex- just extreme, like, yeah, just like extremely loud. Just tell us you want us to be How about quiet. this? This is going to be uh, a hot take right here. <laughs> oh. If you're, if you're a hot cheeto girl. I hate that. Oh, my God. Stop. Like, <laughs> I can't. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what? Get chopsticks. What is it? People eat them with chopsticks so oh. they don't get... Red on their fingers, just saying. <laughs> Be smart. When they order, bo- when they order boneless wings, dude. Yes, that one that's me, bitch. <laughs> oh, you eat chicken nuggets? <laughs> you're dick. A you're walking dick. You're walking dick. A walking dick. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. When they wear super short shorts. All of a sudden, all of this is walk, you're walking dick, my boy. You're walking dick. The comfort of my own office right now. I'm chilling. Oh, that's crazy. Way nah, to throw it in. Oh, so when like they throw shit in your face. <laughs> that, that's yeah. When they make you feel bad for doing something for you. Damn. When they don't <laughs> tell you how they really feel. Damn. When they're just, when they're just beating around the bush and don't say how it is. <laughs> that can't be me. So, what's up? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. A toast, and that concludes the icks. Nah, this is very like specific, but in the gym culture, when you drop the weights, if you're deadlifting and you drop the weights from the top, I don't care if you're a guy or girl, just don't do that. Don't you do that? Don't do that. At the top? No. I set it back down. I, I see Jose. Every time Jose posted the video, he's funny. Oh, that's crazy. What am I doing? He's deadlifting, boom, and then unbuckle his belt, <laughs> <laughs> fixes his bandana. <laughs> Is a hoochie daddy shorts because you know <laughs> that shit went up there <laughs> all the way up. Oh. I'm just hating. I'm We're just hating because he actually goes to the gym. We don't, <laughs> right? <laughs> all right, I think it's been a good episode. It's been really good. It was a good. We talked about what we needed to, right? We let people ask us questions. We when you call yourself a gym girly and you belly gym. I'm sorry, I just had to put that in there. When you call yourself a trainer, but you don't know any exercises, when you do them wrong, the w- you, when you do the wrong exercises. All right, I'm going to hurt some feelings right now. I'm going to really hurt some feelings. Can you be a trainer without ever having a athletic background? Yes, if you have a degree in kinesiology or at least... The bare minimum, a certificate in training. That's the only way. To an extent, because, dude, I can get a certificate in training and, like, look. No, (laughs) definitely. But you at least know know what you're saying. The basics? Yeah. Yeah, the basics. What about being a personal trainer but not have any shows under your belt? And if you're a powerlifting trainer, not have any competitions under your belt? You, You see, I feel like it goes hand in hand because I do compete. Yeah. Regularly. And I feel like if I want to train people, especially for powerlifting, and take them through a prep, I had to have gone through that. Same thing with bodybuilding. I know bodybuilding That's is very strict with dieting and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's like you had to have gone through something like that for you to be teaching somebody else. Because how else would you know? Yeah. There's so much you can do through books or through studying, right? Yeah, but you can only learn so much, right? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. 
You brought it up, fool. So yeah. we just had we had no, to. Yeah, I got, I got like so many people like are just trainers, and they just see them. They're just not doing the right thing. It's just crazy. I think it's in order for you to train somebody, you have to have some sort of success on your own in that same field. In order for you to give people advice or help someone to get to their goals, again, you have to have some sort of like. This is my track record. This is what I've done in the past three, four yeah. years that led me to success. And not, hey, these are my past five years, and I've gotten from this to Bernie here. It's like, wait, I'm trying to, I'm trusting you with my. It's like, would you get a trainer who's out of shape? Just a broad question. Would you get a trainer that's out of shape? No. No. Okay. No. So would you get a trainer that's out of shape, but maybe five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, they weren't in shape? Like, as in, like, four-pack, six-pack, they were good. They were doing their, their uh, competitions. But now they're, they've, quote-unquote, let themselves go, but they're just, like, a, a regular person. No. 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 Why not? The only reason I wouldn't allow someone to tell me what to do in that sense is because I'm coming to you to lead by example. Help me, teach me, and you're still in this field. Yeah, like, I at, like, at least, like, even, like, trainers, even, like, in the boxing area... Like, they're much older, but, yo, they have their history of pro boxing, and they're still active in that whole scene. Like, hey, I'm training this That's pro true. boxer, this, this, this. And if I'm going to get a personal trainer to help me live a healthier lifestyle in food, in trainings, and lifestyle. Got to lead by example. Lead by if example. I aspire to look like you or better. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I got to yeah. have something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where it's like, I mean, I'm not as fucked up as it sounds, right? Like, I'm not going to hire a super out of shape person where it's like, why am I looking? What am I looking towards? What am I looking <clears> at? But what if that person, I'm just playing like, just because yeah, I go for it. Go it's for always it, yeah. like, I'm in that industry. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, like how you were saying, but what if they have the results with, they have the success with other people and they did look like that maybe five, 10 years ago? Like, but now they're just legit. Just if they, if they have current athletes that are at the top shape and like yeah. they they have they have success with their clients. At, at least if they practice to a certain degree the healthy lifestyle and the healthy practices, and they have those clients that like, hey, th this is my current perfect. I got you. Cool. They look a Be little. If their body is a little bit better than mine, yeah, for sure. Because right? I think also age can play it. Play it. I think in training. Age can play a factor. Yeah. You have those. The OGs. If you're like, and we see there's like C.T. Fletcher. There is uh, a. Ronald that, Coleman, Arnold. Yeah, that are 50, 60 plus that are training these young, these young athletes or younger athletes at the top shape. But it's just like, yo, because of their age and their body, you know, it doesn't allow him, allow them to train at that level anymore. But. Yeah, yeah. They have this whole history. Yeah. But now it's like, I'm going to do this for six months, show, and now I'm a elite. Now I'm the best. It's like, no, whoa, whoa. It's, now it's, now it's uh, let me do it one time and I'm good. No, no, no. It's how many times can you do it at the top elite level that's consistent? How, what's your consistency look like? Are you only doing it every now and then, once a time? But we always talk about this. We're consistent with the shit that we do. And if you're not consistent in your profession, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I cannot trust you in my life and my business if you're yourself are not consistent and yeah. showing up for you and your business. So now how does how is this gonna align if, if I'm out working you and you're just oh yeah, cool. Don't get me wrong, that that comes every now and then, but again, do your research. If you're gonna trust somebody, trust them fully, not with limitations we always talk about like i think now where we sit we can help people like hey bro i think you should do this is this, this with oh, yeah, social definitely. media but a year two years ago I, I, bro the only thing i could teach you is what i know right now what, what, I know what i'm right doing now. right now too. what i'm doing right now now that we have x amount of followers and it's like yo we're still building but what's our secret consistency shout out to and this is kind of like a left field, but shout out to J.O.P. from Fuerza Regida. I am not the most talented motherfucker out here, but I'm the most hardworking. My work ethic is going to get me into these places. 
I'm not the most talented. I promise you. I'm not the most knowledgeable in a lot of things, but the way I am, the way I built, the way my work ethic is, I'm going to outwork you. I don't give a fuck who you think you are. I'm going to show up even when you think I'm not going to show up or even when you want to take a rest day. That's what separates us. We outwork a lot of people because we got we don't have a plan B. Yeah. I was telling my cousin just yesterday, I was like, man, I wish I had that uh, gift of like certain gifts, right? Which is whether it's like in the fashion, whether it's visions for like for filming and stuff like that or talent to like process a lot of uh, 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 knowledge and learning. Like I don't have that. But what I do have is I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to work. I'm, I'm down. Put me X amount of hours. I'm down. Yeah. But as that, t- that is a talent though. Like, like a lot, I know a lot of people who feel tired, sick, whatever, or just having the shittiest day or not even a shittiest day. Just one minor inconvenience. You're just going to drop everything and then just vote. But yeah. you're not that person. Yeah. I, 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 like ever since I've coached with you, you just haven't been that person. Yeah, I think it's it's one thing that it's like. Let me ask you guys this: When you die, what do you want to be remembered as or for? The success and the impact I've had on the people that I've done, not even what I've did, but just the impact on what I've had for others, the people who I've helped. You? Damn, that's crazy. When, when you leave this earth, what do you want to be remembered as or for? Damn. I think, and I thought about it recently too. Uh, most important people in my life right now are literally my nieces and nephews. So I want them to remember me as the person who was always there for them. I think, right. obviously, if I affect the world or I help the world, that's great. But I don't care if the world doesn't remember me as long as those three little people remember me as the person who was always there for them and the person that they could count on. Powerful. That's deep. How you say that's deep? That's deep. Hell yeah. Yeah, because people, it sucks to say, but people will remember you for what you do from the moment you were born to the moment you die. And once that happens, once you leave this earth, you'll be known of how great of a person you were. They may not tell you now. They may not tell you to your face or over text or over a phone call. But you know how great you were, unfortunately, when you're not here. So, That's, yeah, it's how it is with, like, Athletes, legends, uh, musicians, artists, yeah. artists. Like, you won't know you're the greatest, one of the greatest of all times until you're past. And obviously, you, you won't be, uh, ever know. But yeah. at least the people who remembered your hard times and remembered you are going to at least experience that. Like, oh, wow. Like, they're finally recognizing that. But I knew, knew no, I've known all along. Yeah. He, they were that person to me. Yeah. Right. What about you? How do you want to be remembered? I've always said this. I want to be remembered for what I did do and not for what I didn't do or what I aspired to be. It's like, Mm -hmm. hey, this person here did X, Y, and Z, and they made an impact on X, Y, and Z. That's what I want to be remembered for. I don't want to remember what, oh, he had big dreams. Oh, he had big aspirations. Oh, He he, he wanted to do this. I want to be remembered for, hey, he did do this, and he did help, and he did leave an impact. So, I mean, it's a fine line. That's why we go back to what we said. Don't leave it for tomorrow or for next week or for six months from now or from a year from now. Do it now. Because, unfortunately, the way life is, it's unexpected. You never know. We never know. We have a gift to wake up today. We have an opportunity to be great today. We have a choice. Do you want to or do you not? Whatever your choice is, you live with it. Because today and tomorrow, we just never know. And then we we get lit, we get left with the what ifs. Or, unfortunately, when... This is why, like, again, with you guys and with anybody else that is really close to me, yo, I love you guys, appreciate you guys, get home safe. Because I don't know if that's the last time I ever talk to you. 
I want to live forever with you guys, and I want to be eternal. But, you know, if you don't appreciate those moments that you have with your people right now, you're going to be left with, man, I should have done this. Or I should have said this. And that's why now it's like, nope, I can't live with that. I did before. And I hated myself for it for a long time. Now it's, nope, I love you. I'm here for you. We're having a great life together. This is the best. Not, hey, I wish I would have said that to him. No, 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 I did. I said it. They heard me. They're not going to hear me once they're up in heaven. They hear me now. Yep. So now it's like, if you have those people, embrace them. If you have people that you love, tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. Tell them you're there for them. Tell them they can count on you. Don't wait until they're going to hear you from seven feet under, nine feet under. If you need to forgive them, try your best to forgive them. And always be a good person. It doesn't take a lot to be a good person. Because you don't know when, like you said it, you don't know when the last time that you see that person is going to be. Yeah. Right? And you don't know if your act of kindness saved their life today. You know, how are you? How are you doing? Hey, you're simple amazing. Gesture can change their, their day, their life. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, that, that simple, like, how's your day today? Or how are you doing? Like, uh, may, they maybe have not heard that in a while. And uh, even if it's like the automatic response, oh, it's, it's a good day. Yeah. It's good. It's one of those, like, still, finally somebody cared about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn, somebody, somebody cares. They don't know yeah. me, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. they cared enough to ask me. Even if, Yeah, even if I say, oh, it's, it's cool. It's good. Yeah. This is where it, it kind of just shifts really quick, but it's like we all had a moment when we were younger when we hoped and we wished someone was there for us. So now that we're much older, wiser, experienced, you know, a little bit of uh, bumps and bruises because of everything in life happened, don't ever forget that be who you needed when you were younger. Yeah, I'm... Um, uh like, well, I don't know if grateful is the right word, but I can be that person to my brother now. Just because he's legit. Growing up the same way how, how I did. Yeah. So it's like I can be there for him. And that's why I said the only real, the only people that I really care about remember me in this lifetime is those three kids. Because I'm trying to be the person that I needed when I was growing up for them. Because I, I mean, we talked about it. Dad was around, but wasn't really around. And I see those kids needing their parents, but obviously parents work. And I'm blessed enough to be able to be that person that has a little bit of time. So I want to be there for them as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to be that person that's present. Which is what I needed. I just needed somebody to be there. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot. I mean... Sometimes all kids want or just people in general want or need is somebody to be there for them. Yeah. I feel like they matter. I think that uh, um, time won't get stopwatch. (laughs) The bomb? (laughs) Yeah, boom. I think that uh, that part where we had, we had, I mentioned it earlier, but I am this person now being there for a lot of people showing up for a lot of people even though at the end of the day i get hurt because that's the person i wanted to be that's the person i needed in my life that i know i can't offer jack i can't offer anything i am not at my best i'm at my worst but i just needed someone to say hey i know you're i know you can't i got you i'll be here with you so that's where like this whole i'm gonna be here i'm gonna be there like don't worry about it I don't need nothing in return, but it's like, yo, like, I hope one day someone just says, I'm here. I'll be here. So it ties into, I know we all feel this way and we don't show it, but I know we do. I lost my smile again, but it's okay. It'll be back soon. I posted That's crazy. <laughs> You posted it? Yeah. I'm a close friend. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I'm not close friends. <laughs> you saw I haven't it. seen it. I haven't seen it. I don't think I saw it. So it's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's just I know right now for a lot of people that are going through a tough time, that are trying to figure things out, trying to figure themselves out, trying to see what the next move is, or things that are unsure or 
uncertain, like, it's okay. It's a bad season. It's a bad time. But how we always say, and as I said, the clouds don't stay out forever. The sun will come out, but you have to get there. You have to yeah. make sure you get there. You can't call it quits just yet because life is about a good grade. And according to astrology, it's the start of the new year. So what's up? Happy New Year's. <laughs> so happy, happy New Year's happy to new everybody. Year's, guys. So, boys, one more in the books. It's been a pleasure. It's been a always. pleasure. One more time. <laughs> there it is. It's also life. It's Appreciate okay. everybody. Appreciate everybody tuning in, subscribing, sharing, commenting, and sharing your not going to lies and your cheesements. It's <laughs> crazy. To the next one. Let's go. Yeah. Imagine didn't didn't record. <laughs> <laughs>